Good morning, folks. Solar storms continue, and there could be more on the way. We've got some weather to worry about as well, but we began by revisiting yesterday's top story because in the live one-take show yesterday, I misspoke in a preposterous tongue-tie, but which has zero effect on the conclusion. So at 4 a.m., I accidentally said that cosmic rays were forecast to be 19 times higher than last cycle, when I clearly meant 19%. And although the words didn't come out from my mouth correctly, the mind was in the correct place. 19 times higher would be impossible and Earth's atmosphere would be destroyed. 19% is still absolutely as terrifying as purported yesterday and folks I checked, it's not a typo. They meant it. The issue is that the last cycle had higher cosmic rays at the sunspot minimum than at any other time in the space age and to go 19% higher at the peak this cycle puts us off the charts. This is where cosmic ray cloud forcing Hail, nucleation, and lightning intensification have the potential to be darn close to what doomsayers claim is coming in the weather. That's exactly why I said I hoped it was a typo, or at least an incorrect forecast, because if it's right, we're in big, big trouble. Anyway, keeping it positive, let's come over to spaceweathernews.com, and we'll be checking out the last 24 hours on our star in 193 angstroms. Big dark coronal hole, somewhat calm umbral magnetic fields. Top left, you're going to see the only release, a tiny one, as a filament snaps following minor active region morphing. We'll be easily able to see it was a minor surge, and the plasma motion is to the left from our view, behind our orbital position. Really quickly going to fade angstroms to remind or inform some newcomers about where the sunspots are beneath some of the features seen in other wavelengths. Huge looping magnetic fields and more energized ionized helium are what we see above sunspots every time on these other views. Solar flaring? Still a dud as the sunspots aren't producing or really even capable. Solar wind remains intense and the geomagnetic storm from solar plasma continues to keep us in storm or unstable conditions. Been there about 36 hours. And really the worry is a consecutive impact scenario where the wind from this coronal hole would impact before we can recover from the current storm. That's what happened in June 2015 when it took over the Van Allen belts for a year. Let's shift gears. Real quick, we've got a new members advice video over at quakewatch.net. Members and earthquake forecasters, be sure to check out the April 21st posting under the members forecasting tips forum. That is also posted for website members of suspiciousobservers.org as your latest deeper look. Don't miss it. Significant concerns in the Gulf states today, that low is going to concentrate its moisture intake to just a few hundred miles north of the water, and it will be shifting. Eyes open up through Tennessee and further into Appalachia. We're also eyeing a powerful storm trying to clip the North Island of New Zealand, while its chances are slim to do so. That earth spot sits along the Kermadec Trench, which has seen blot echoes just to the north the last two days. So quick reminder, yesterday was Saturday, so a new podcast is available at suspiciousobservers.org along with that new deeper look. We went about as conspiracy as you can get in the second half of the show. Remember, quakewatch.net members, find that new advice posting in the Members Forecasting Tips Forum. We're going to have the rest of your pressure and radar forecast followed by a null school global map run and shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.